Ben and Sean, two American software developers, are flying to Russia. Suddenly, the power in the plane goes out because something went wrong with the electricity. But it comes back on quickly, and they land safely in Moscow. They're in Moscow to find local people who might want to invest money in their app. Their app helps people find bars and events nearby. Sean's suit is old and has a hole in it, so he uses a marker to cover the hole. On their way to meet some people for business, they check if anyone in Moscow is using their app. They find two American girls using it and having fun. When they finally get to where they're supposed to have a meeting about getting money for their app, they find out that someone they know, Skylar, has already started the meeting without them. Skylar has copied their idea and is selling a fake version of their app to Russians. Skylar tells them they're not needed and has security take them away. Later, Ben and Sean go to a club to have some drinks and try to forget about their problems. Sean meets a girl he likes, but she's with Skylar. They also find the two American girls from the app, Anne and Natalie. They're happy that Anne and Natalie recognize them from their blog, where they talk about making the app. The four of them are having a good time together when suddenly the lights go out and their phones stop working. Everyone in the city goes outside to see a strange, yellow light in the sky. It only lasts for a few seconds before splitting into smaller lights that start falling all over the city. One of the lights lands near Sean's group, and everyone is shocked. They can't really see what it is, just a faint shimmer from certain angles. A police officer decides to approach the light carefully and poke it with his stick, but the light suddenly destroys him until there's nothing left but ash. The crowd gets scared and runs away. Another cop tries to shoot the light, but the bullet also disintegrates. More lights appear and start killing people. Sean's group rushes back into the club and closes the doors, but the light destroys all the windows. The creature sees the world in gray and humans as glowing orange. It shoots lines of energy, dragging people into its center to disintegrate them. Someone makes a makeshift bomb with bar supplies and throws it at the creature, which keeps it back temporarily. Skylar rushes into the club, but leaves his date outside and she gets disintegrated. Sean's group finds a supply room to hide with the wounded bartender. Hours pass without much happening, and they survive on the food in the room. Sadly, the bartender dies from his wound, so they wrap his body in plastic and duct tape to prevent it from decaying. Tensions rise, and arguments break out frequently. After five days, they run out of food and decide to search for the US Embassy. They find the bar empty and destroyed, so they gather supplies and a map of Moscow. Unfortunately, the map doesn't have important locations marked. The streets are empty with abandoned cars everywhere. They hear a noise and try to ask for help from a Russian lady sealing her window, but she only warns them in Russian about ghosts outside. The group finally finds the bridge that should take them to the embassy, but it's wrecked by a warship crashing into it. They explore the city, looking for another way across the river. When they reach Red Square, they spot an empty police car. Skylar and the girls hide nearby while Ben and Sean cautiously approach the car. They open the trunk and find a better map and a flare gun. Suddenly, a dog starts barking at something invisible and then disappears. Terrified, Ben and Sane urge everyone to run into the nearby mall. They hide under the police car as the creature gets closer. The car's lights and siren turn on, but the creature can't see them underneath and eventually leaves. Afterward, they regroup inside the mall and discover an airliner crashed into the building. Skylar suggests they stay put, but Sean and Ben believe they should keep moving to stay safe. They realize the creature uses an electrical field for protection, which activates electronic devices. They make light bulb necklaces as warning signals for when the creature approaches. While searching for clothes to run in, Sean watches Natalie undress until the bulbs light up, signaling the creature's proximity. Sean freezes, and the creature passes without noticing him. Natalie hides among the clothes racks, and when the creature comes close, Sean pulls her away, realizing that glass blocks the creature's sensors. The group leaves the mall and searches for the US Embassy, but they find it destroyed. There are signs of a gunfight at the entrance, and Skylar finds a rifle, which he starts using recklessly, shooting without aiming at anything. The others are not impressed with his behavior. Skylar stays to guard the entrance while the rest explore upstairs, but they find no survivors. In the Situation Room, they find reports about the global situation. Communication lasted only briefly after the attack. Most capital cities are invaded, and there's no known way to fight the monsters, except hiding underground. They also find a map with estimates of survivors marked on it. Inside a birdcage, they discover a radio, but it only plays a message in Russian. 
which they can't understand. Anne insists they turn it off for fear of attracting the creatures. Looking outside through a rifle scope, they see balls of yellow light and smoke rising from various spots in the city as the creatures dig around. The digging causes buildings to collapse, adding to the destruction. Suddenly, they hear gunshots and see Skylar running down the street. Sian and Ben decide to chase after him to rescue him. They grab the map and radio on their way out. Ani and Natalie see a monster approaching and warn the guys, so they all run out to the street. When Sean and Ben reach Skylar, car alarms start blaring, signaling the monster's proximity. Skylar tells them to distract the creature by shooting at it while he draws its attention away from the others. Despite their efforts, Skylar is disintegrated, but his sacrifice allows Sean and Ben to escape. The group reunites, and Sean notices a room with power in an apartment building nearby, suspecting that this is why Skylar left. They carefully sneak through the city, avoiding the creature's attention, and reach the apartment building just before sunrise. They encounter Vika, who points her gun at them and speaks in Russian. They explain in English that they saw the light, and thankfully, Vika speaks English too. She leads them to an apartment with a metal cage covering it, including the cat wearing a small metal structure. The apartment owner, Sergei, is glad to see more survivors and explains that he has a diesel generator. Vika adds that Sergei transformed the apartment into a Faraday cage, which blocks electromagnetic fields and keeps the creatures out. They turn on the radio from the cage and Vika translates the message. A nuclear submarine in the Moscow River will pick up survivors before morning. They learn that many submarines worldwide are doing the same thing, as submarines are perfect Faraday cages. The group agrees to leave together to find the submarine, but they need supplies first. Vika, Natalie, and Anne go to search other apartments for supplies. On their way out, Anne doesn't close the latch properly. Meanwhile, Sergei shows Sean and Ben a microwave gun he built to disrupt the monster's electrical shield. As the girls search for supplies, the creatures spot them and move in to attack. The girls run away, but Anne believes she can make it to Sergei's place and starts running with Natalie following her. They reach Sergei's apartment but can't close the hatch properly, so they hide behind a glass table. The creature enters, and Sergei fires the microwave rifle at it, temporarily freezing the creature and revealing its ugly body. Unfortunately, Sergei can't recharge the gun fast enough, and the monster disintegrates him. Sean and Ben escape through a fire escape, while Natalie sets diesel fuel on fire to cover their escape. She joins the boys, but Anne is too scared to move fast enough and gets disintegrated by the monster. The trio reunites with Vika outside and runs away as flames engulf the apartment. They encounter a group of Russian policemen dressed in metal, armed with homemade weapons and shields. The policemen tell them to hide, and when the street lights glow, they open fire on the monster, managing to hurt it and scare it away. The policemen explain that they can hurt the monsters but not kill them, and the monsters are weakest when using their lightning. Sean notices a piece of hard black substance on the ground, knocked off the creature's shield and decides to keep it. After the cops take the group to their hideout, both sides share the information they have. The officers are unsure about the reliability of the radio message, and their leader warns that the river is far and dangerous. Despite this, the group insists on leaving. Natalie delivers a heartfelt speech about wanting to return home and the cops agree to escort them to the river. Both groups venture into the subway tunnels for added safety. They scatter miniature light bulbs to check for monsters, which immediately start glowing, prompting them to hide on the platform as lines of light attack. They jump onto the train tracks to avoid the light, but Vinka gets stuck. Ben goes back to save her but is captured and killed by the light. Sean is devastated, but Natalie urges him to keep moving. They reach the river and steal a boat, sailing until they spot the approaching submarine. However, a collapsing building causes debris to tip the boat over, throwing everyone into the water. Sean, Vika, and the cops swim to the submarine, but one officer is seriously injured. The captain insists they leave immediately, but Sean notices Natalie is missing. A distant flare signals her location, and Sean convinces the captain to wait for her. The technicians on the submarine examine the microwave gun and build a better version with improved batteries. Sean leaves with the cops and weapons, leaving Vika on the submarine for safety. As the group moves through the streets, they use phones as warning devices. They reach a trolleybus depot, but a ringing phone alerts them to an incoming alien. 
The cops take cover while Sean struggles with his weapon, but he manages to activate it just in time. The waves freeze the alien, allowing the cops to shoot it, causing it to explode and confirming the electricity is a shield that needs disrupting with the waves first. Natalie hears the group celebrating and calls out to Sean from activating the windshield wipers to signal her location. Plan. Sean goes to Natalie while the cops spill water from a tank truck to amplify the effect of the microwave guns. The aliens arrive but won't come near the water. Vika appears behind them and throws Molotov cocktails to force them onto the water, allowing the cops to expose their bodies with microwave guns and make them explode. Meanwhile, Sean finds Natalie inside the bus, and they hug. An alien's electrical surge makes the bus move with them inside. Sean tries to shoot the alien, but the movement makes him miss. The alien grabs Natalie's leg, but Sean hits it with the waves, and Natalie takes over the wheel to steer the bus. Sean throws the piece of black substance, making the alien explode and stopping the bus. The group rushes back to the submarine, but the cops decide to stay and protect their home. They ask Sean to tell the world how to defeat the aliens. The submarine leaves, and Natalie receives a text from her mom, saying she's safe in Penn Station with other survivors. Sean and Natalie try to kiss, but Vika interrupts them. Later, they listen to shortwave radio reports about groups fighting the aliens and decide to join them.